Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. I guess we'll start here. So this is a 10 tag Centurion. This is the one that's got two, three, five hundred Z's in it. We've had one of these here before. Oh, this has been a trial of my patience day. I dropped that video for the um, Tokyo High Power. I guess somewhere in there I must have screwed up and slipped and said VHF or UHF or something or other. I had a guy message me today. He was just damned insistent to teach me the difference between HF and UHF and VHF. And then the other criticism that he gave me today was that when I uh, test these multi-band HF amplifiers that I make sure as he put it, you need to make sure that the amplifier or the radio is directly in the middle of the amateur band that I'm talking about. It's like, okay, I can do that. I'll do that. Meanwhile, I'm thinking in the back of my head, does it, does it really matter? I'm showing that it works on the band, that the input is okay. The amplifier is basically straight. I don't. Does that negate all the other data that I'm showing? No. I don't know. It, it just takes a lot to keep everybody happy, it seems. You just got to be patient at all times. And then it devolved into who has the higher class license and so on. And look, guys, I got my amateur license a long, long time ago. And there's certain things in my life that I still like to kind of keep a little bit of level of privacy at. Come on, think about it. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm just here working on it, not sitting around talking about it. I'm sitting here doing it. So, I appreciate the input though. I appreciate the critique. I will endeavor to do it differently in the future. So, on that note, moving on. Uh, what do we have here? Ooh, iMac. And they're not smoked out. Oh, it's a clean little girl. Comes a pre-equipped carry handle. Nah, th this is like all the other amps, HF amps that come through here and uh, the, the VHF amp that I just did a video on um, where you need to take the transformer out for transport. Wow, did you need a tiny wire coming off that? Well, let me take that back. The last one that I shipped out of here, that didn't come out. It worked out fine. Of course, we put it in a wood crate and whatnot. Band selector looks good. Last 10 tech we had in here, it didn't have the pair of Z's in it, but it had an A and B 160 meter and an A and B 80 meters. So I had to show it on the low end of the band and then the high end of the band. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe people's grumpiness is just starting to get to me. I don't know. Let's see what we got here. This would be a great candidate for the aftermarket anode caps from my buddy at RF Junk. Let's see what we got. 
written new. It's got writing on it. It says new. One. Three 500Zs. Look at that. Pins on that thing are pristine. Glass is clear. Let me give you an example of what to look for on another tube here. So here's a broke one. Here's a filament woggle woggling around in this one. So you can see how smoked out the glass is, how it's dark down here in the bottom. And then we can tell the pins have been heated significantly versus this. Same tube, different form process. So like, here's a tailor. Oh, and this one's bad too. A little piece of the filament hanging out down here. <laughs> Great. That's a bummer. That was a great tube. Must have got banged around too much. Anywho, this is what I call one of my sloppy hose. There we go. Those anode caps are barely clear. Thank God he makes different ones. It's a little bit too tall. Anyhow. Let's put this guy back in. Now, this is what we call an unknownium. And we gotta pull these out and verify it so that it's a nonium. Otherwise, we know what the hell it is. We don't know what it is now. We didn't know what was in it when we bought it. So now we know. So the ne next couple stages of verification are very important. We'll take, we're gonna bend this up out of the way. Take and we'll bend this up out of the way. Get rid of the dead man switch. And then there should be another pressure switch someplace we gotta override. Yep, down here. I'll override this switch. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna light the amp, but without any high voltage on the anode or the top of the tubes. None. And we're gonna sit here and we're gonna watch the tubes light up and we're gonna watch what they do. If they start to fill with smoke, I got a guy, um, his name's Bob. He's currently fighting with this where he put a tube in his amp, slapped the tube in it, ran the tube immediately with high voltage on it and apparently had lost its vacuum. And he said, well, first the inside of the tube turned white and then it looked like lightning inside of a bottle as it was arcing over on the inside. And I went, oh, you didn't do the air bottle test. He goes, the what bottle test? I said, the air bottle test. He didn't do the air bottle test. Air bottle test is to make sure that we don't have a bottle of air. We've actually got a bottle with a vacuum in it. Okay. So in any situation where you don't know what the environment is that you're going into inside of the tube, we're always going to run it without any high voltage attached to it. Okay. Because if the filament's bad and short it out, we don't want to have that high voltage shorting out to the broken filament leads on the inside. Or if it's lost its vacuum, as the filament heats up, it's going to burn up, then short out, and it's going to short against the inside of the anode screen and pfft, Bob Jungle. Then you're going to damage other stuff down the line. And that's what Bob's at now. He's trying to figure out what else he tore up as that tube was arcing out internally. 
So this is just the first step. Now my question is, why does this gotta come out? Why did somebody have to take this out? Give it a good little look over. No burnt contacts on the band switch. This all feels good. Let's put all this stuff away before we proceed forward. My luck, I'd go and move it and the tube would fall off the bench. I've had that happen before and it cost me a lot of money. So, there's a little safety interlock we were talking about. down here in the filtering board. It all looks good. Rectifier pack looks good. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, no smokage come out. We're good. Take a look down here through the vent. That looks good. our input band board. That looks good. I don't know what's going on here. Ugh. It does have the 10 and 11 meter board added to it. Oh, pardon me. 15 and 10. <laughs> Sorry guys, I thought it was funny. So that little connector has been modified here. Interesting. Well, that will affect nothing. Little scratch right there. Let's make sure our edges aren't broken. I've dealt with that before. Those are good. On off switch looks good. At least the lights are easy to change on this. On all the Henry's I've been through, them are all bastards. I got one of those I gotta work on here pretty quick too. Just a little FYI, you guys, nothing will get me to shut down and quit talking to you quicker than trying to talk politics to me, trying to talk religion to me, or trying to prove your knowledge or worth in the radio community by the rank or class of license that you have. I literally will just shut down and stop talking to you. I, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not defined by this by any means. So just a word to the wise that if you do decide to reach out to me and say something to me that um, if you feel it's necessary to divulge, divulge the, or devolve the conversation to that level, you'll see me just clam up, shut down and walk away from you because I don't feel like having any argument. I've had it too many times in my life, like thousands and thousands and thousands of times, right? I got opinions on things just like the next guy, but I keep a lot of those things to myself. And I don't utilize my amateur ticket ever for anything. It holds no interest to me at this point. It might in the future, but not today. Okay, 
Now that I got that little school schoolyard gripe, like a little tiny bitchy kid off my shoulders and out of my system, let's trim this zip tie. Ah. Uh. Nothing else too sharp in here that'll cause somebody's precious skin to get cut. I was uh, <clears throat> having dinner with my grandmother the other day, and I was looking at her skin, and it's just like it's a 96-year-old woman. And frailer than tissue paper is an understatement. Actually, that's giving her credit for how strong her skin is. And I thought, man. From now on, I gotta really make a double effort to make sure that the zip ties are cut clean because I don't, God, I just hate to see one of my guys stick their hand in here and then end up cutting their skin or whatever. And I, I just know how long it takes for shit to heal anymore on even myself. So I can only imagine what it'd be like for somebody a little bit older than me. Meter bio board looks okay. All right, let's open up the bottom side here. Even though there's not a lot to look at, we still gotta look anyhow. You know what I mean? There's a scratch that runs right here, right here, and another one that's right here. So I'm sure you guys can see. Looks good. Straight from El Factoria. Here. Here, I'll show you. The last one of these I had it, I think, priced a little bit too high. And it sat here for a long time. Like, forever. I mean, it eventually sold, but I think I was asking too much for it. Now, you guys understand that there's an inflation issue that has taken place, right? That the 1990 doll hairs don't exactly translate to 2020 dollars. 30 years worth of inflation to take place there. I was reading some of the criticisms on the last video. I did a one of these and they're like, that's crazy. In 1990 or 87 or whatever it was, they sold for $1,300. How can you ask 18 for it? Well, it's worth it. But. You go put 1980, 19, let's say, let's, we'll just say 1990, we'll say 1990 doll, doll hairs. You go put that into an inflation calculator and then calculate it for 2019. And then tell me what that inflates out to. And I'm not selling this new, it is what it is. So I can't sell it for that amount of money. I got myself curious, I gotta look. Oh, that's scary. What cost $1,350 in $1990 would cost $2,618 in 2018? Holy cow. Thus, versely, in the reverse direction, something that cost $1,350 today in 1990 would have cost $672.38 centers. Puts heartburn in my chest. That's nuts. So I don't, I see those comments and I don't say anything anymore. I just go, okay. Um, okay. You know what I mean? That's the two scratches that we're talking about on the bottom. This here and that here. So we got that documented. All right, let's move on to the back side. There's our serial number.
power cable is in good condition, fuse holders are in good condition, coax connectors in good condition, condition. Uh, the key, PGT Vox, and the key out are all in good shape. good okay um, let's run it for those of you that might know and those of you that don't know I might have to go take a trip I don't honestly remember where we were at in the last little segment of video but um, I'm home and I spent most of my morning it's now four o'clock in the afternoon and I spent most of my morning no shit just returning phone calls from yesterday and the day before because I was traveling. I had to go help a friend with one of his boxes and it was way too big to ship and I just got on an airplane and went and did it. I'm not going to lie, I really enjoyed myself. I had a lot of fun. My friend that's going to watch this video, he knows who you are and he, you know what we did. And we had a good time and I, I thank you. I enjoyed it. But it's now time to get back to work. So. In trying to keep things stock, there's this little decal that sits on top of this transformer, and it is just about ready to flop off. And I noticed when I was removing the um, rope that goes around this transformer, which I was talking about in the last little segment of video. This decal is inspired to bite the dust. This is neat stuff. This is uh, Scott's Brands double side clear stick tape. It's clear. So put down a nice piece of stick tape and then put the sticker back down. Face the same way it was when it came out of the factory stock. To help stay with the uh, pristine order of things here. Now I can't help but notice at some point or another, I'm just now picking up on this, is that the coax from over here off the input board, um, the coax goes off, comes around, goes down, comes over into the tube socket down here, this would be your input coax, has been replaced with 316. So I gotta document that to document that. And when they did the repair, this is what it looked like up in the front end of things here. And I'm going to now repair this to my standards. No, it's not going to take it at that angle. Hold on. Let's switch the big old Cameroonie around here one more time. It's just a downside down with a camera the size of like a television production camera. It's, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, now we should be able to see it a little bit better. So there should be another little white plug like this one here, but it is MIA, it's missing. And so they took and they soldered to the pins, directly to the pins, this 316 coax, which I don't like. So I am gonna change that and make it more something that I feel comfortable with. Doo, doo, doo. Started snowing here this morning, and then it promptly quit. It's a little bit of a bummer, but because I'm ready for winter to be here. Whoever did this repair, they did it right. Um, I'm going to give them credit where credit's due because the odds are they're going to probably watch this video at some point or another, and I don't want them to feel bad. Um, I appreciate and admire the fact that you mechanically connected the connections. And what I mean by that is they took the wire leads and they physically wrapped them around the pins. And then they soldered them in place. So in all fairness, they did a great job. And this would probably last um, a guy years, this repair. Years. I'm saying but I just want to polish this up a little bit take 
that off and we'll bend that down. Okay. So then I want this. And then I need this. And then I need these two little pieces. So say about yeah as much. About there. been a long week and as soon as I'm done with this one I gotta go jump into my end of year video like immediately into it so I'm not trying to rush myself or anything but I need to be done with this and I need to uh, get this ready to go on to a new home after the first of the year I'm here to tell you it back a little bit more. There we go. I'll let that hang out there for a second. I'll let this hang out for a second. Okay. Ah, oh, son of a do fart miller. Son of a gun. All right. Now its parent partner is going to fall off. Long week. Long week. Someday when this is all done and over with, I just kind of imagine myself sitting down like a 60 minute style interview and explaining to people how stressful this job is. Well, Barbara Wawa, it uh, started out fun and relaxing, and then it became this giant never-ending grind of continuously having to try and meet arbitrary deadlines to get projects done. And it slowly but surely sucked the total meaning life out of everything for me, and I, all I had to do was this all 24-7, and no, it's not that bad. I'm just teasing. I'm just trying to make it out like it's not totally gay. Like, you show up, to pick your date up from prom back in high school and she's got a strap on dildo on you're trying to walk around and explain to all your friends how you think it's hot kind of gay you know meanwhile she's running around telling all your friends oh no he thinks it's hot he likes it da, 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 da. meanwhile she doesn't understand she's making you look not so hot what i mean by look not so hot is like your friends are going wait a minute what's up with the strap on yeah and then you're trying to counter it by saying oh no Really, you guys, on the outside of things, it's real hot. She's hot. She looks hot naked. But down deep inside, you're like, why would she do such a thing? Not that kind of gay. You know what I mean? Just stressful. It's just stressful. <sighs> but at the end of the day, I guess it is fun. Or otherwise, I'd probably throw in the towel and go off and be a porn movie director or some shit. I don't know. Okay, squeeze those two together a little bit. And now we'll work our shrink down onto the connectors, like so.
you cool down, once you form fit to that connection, torqued in that direction, and as soon as the epoxy and the heat shrink sets, it's never going to move. See, this way, I don't ever have to worry about any foreign body coming in here and giving us a hard time about nothing. No shorty action on the coaxial actions. Actions. Zzz. Actions. Zzz. Okay. So now what we got to do is we got to override this little safety switch. Okay. And this is yet another dead man switch to keep you from electrocuting yourself. Well, on the last box I had, this particular dead man switch had enough room that I could sneak a zip tie around it. So I just took this piece of phenolic, drilled a little hole in it, used one of the stock case screws, and screwed it down. Now that switch is closed. As far as the switch is concerned, the cabinet's on the amplifier, and we can proceed forward. Uh, see, on the last one, I also had problems with the key in circuit, but I don't think we're gonna have that problem here. So, zip over here, make sure our dead man switch, the case sits against this lever, and it holds it flat. Take the case off, gravity comes into play, and it falls against the high voltage pass-through other side of the high voltage pass-through, we have this couple ohm wire wound resistor, which is basically a glitch choke, which is designed to explode, and that's its only purpose, is to explode if the tubes short out for some reason, or this bar gets dropped on the shorting bar. This resistor absorbs the electrical shock that takes place with the immediate return to ground, detonates into about 7,000 little pieces and says, hey, you're an idiot, but you're still alive, and it protects your whole high voltage rectifier circuit over here in the corner. It's like the sacrificial lamb, okay? I'd rather give up that little resistor than smoke this entire board. So we gotta make sure that we bypass that. Well, win, lose, or draw, here we go. So now what we're looking at is to make sure that the tubes are even in brightness and they're not filling up with smoke of any kind. So, right now there's 3,200 volts on the plate supply, which, if I change my angle, is this, this little bit of stuff here. Okay, <clears throat> there's nothing on the top of the tubes, we're just heating the filaments. We just want to let this go for a couple minutes. And while we got it running, yep, got our cooling air. So, just want to let it go for a couple minutes because we don't want to get it too hot because now we got to go and put high voltage on it. Let's put some air on it. We'll be back. So, my good friend at RF Junk, Chris. Uh, who builds those beautiful anode tops for these tubes um, has been bugging me to do a, um, a before and after like a one-to-one -one comparison and I thought this would be a good opportunity for that but the only anode caps that I have for him or from him are like three times the size and it won't work in this amplifier but I do have an SB220 that's getting ready to come up I could actually probably do it in the next day or so. There we go. I could probably do it in the next day or so to do a one-to-one -one, side to side comparison. I'm not joking, those make such it makes a huge difference, those caps, in uh, just overall operation, energy dissipation, heat dissipation off the top of the anode. And you know, when you keep your tube cooler, you can get a little bit more poop out of it for a little bit longer. Just saying. And I'm not just talking in the short, oh, we can get 20 more watts out of it. I'm talking overall the life of the tube. Okay, the man switch is thrown back. All right, let's hook up some coax to it here real quick and a foot pedal. This is my least favorite part of this whole adventure. All right, so I got my little cheat sheet here. We're gonna write them down. Whoever ends up owning this box, I want them to be able to not have to 
hunt and peck for where their resonance point is going to be for each one of the bands. So, created ourselves a little cheat sheet here. Let me get over here and get this organized over here real quick, you guys. <sighs> All right. We're good to go. Okay. So, now we're going to go talk on 160 meter band, which is uh, 1.8 megahertz through 2 megahertz. Now, I had a gentleman message me earlier this week. First, he went off and he explained to me that I don't know the difference between HF and VHF and UHF. I was like, okay. And then, I mean, just a random phone number to start sending me texts. And then he said that I wasn't setting the ICOM up, it's showing how I'm setting up the ICOM, the bench radio, that I wasn't showing that it was in the middle of the band. And, Therefore, 100% of the data that I was trying to share was completely not valid. I was like, what? Dude, it worked within band. It, anyhow, I'm not that hypercritical of a human being. And then he went on to explain to me some other stuff. And I was like, okay, man, well, I appreciate you messaging me. And I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying radio. I you know, appreciate input. So, anyhow, 1.8 megahertz. This thing is set at one point. In, so I'll be dead center in the middle. We are currently in sideband operation, lower side. We're at 100% power and 100% mic gain. Okay. So 160 down here displayed. And I pray to God you guys don't get motion sick while watching this video. <clears throat> All right. So we're in standby. Hello. I'm gonna put 80 whole watts in this amplifier. Put it into operate, step on a pedal. And just so we know, that's our zero signal on the plate amp meter. Hello. Hello. So we're showing over a thousand watts. It's to be expected. Let's flick that up into 2x. So now fully deflected, that needle all the, the one on the right, all the way to the corner, is 2,000 watts. I bet you we'll see about 12, 1,300 watts of power. Hello. Hello. Working exactly how it should. Exactly how it should. Oh, and all transparency here. Okay. Thousand watt element. Let's zoom out here for a second. And let's write this down on our little cheat sheet. So load's going to be 7.5 and 7.1 on the tune for 160 meters. Dead nuts middle in the band. Dead nuts. Got a crosshair set on it. Like a sniper rifle. Okay, let's go to 80. Okay, so now we're on 80 meters. Let's go up here and show you the ICOM. So I don't like to do a lot of the twists in the camera around because I've had many, many, many more than just one guy. Many, many people tell me that uh, it makes them motion sick. So, because we're really close to the lights at the top of the bench, we'll engage a different filter on the camera. I'm sorry, I slip every once in a while. I'm not perfect. Sorry, I forget sometimes I gotta change my aperture rating on the camera. And I also forget that uh, I've gotta show the radio in every single video. Otherwise people get upset about it. We're dead middle in 80 meter band. We're on sideband, full 100% power, full mic gain. So put this in standby once again. Hello, 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 hello. Now, when I do that, I'm also sh I'm telling I'm showing you two things in one. I'm showing that the pass through SWR, which would show up on this scale here, is good. That means you have the ability to talk through it and hear through it. So now we're going to come over here. Hello. Remember, we're in the 2,000 watt scale. So that's 180 watts. Hello. About halfway between the. Hello. 
Make sense? Makes sense to me. Hello. Hello. There's our 1200 watts of power. Yeah, yes. All right. So now let's scroll on down here. And we'll back the camera out again. Let's see what we got to write down this time around. So 80 meters in the middle of the band is roughly going to tune at about a 7.8 over here. 7.8. And then over here we're going to see about a 5, say 5.4. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense to me. Moving on. So here we are now in the 40 meter position. Let's go up here once again. We'll go through this thing one more time, a couple more times anyhow. So right dead middle in the middle of the 40 meter band. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna start referring to things as their actual textbooks names because I, I had an instance where I did the uh, I did the video on the uh, little Tokyo high power amplifier that it, we've got it for sale. And I had a guy um, share with me that, uh, in, in his opinion, that six meters was the magic band of all magic bands. And he started sending me web page links to prove his argument. I was like, I'm okay. I've never heard six meters referred to as the magic band. Um, always heard. I've heard guys refer to 40 as a magic band and 20. And 20 usually is what I always considered and have always considered ever since I was 12 and 13 years old when I first got my ham license, my amateur radio operator's license, that uh, those were the magic of all magic bands. And I was like, what? Are you sure? Because I've always heard it referred to by 20. And I start looking and it's pretty much universally accepted on Google anyhow that uh, 6 meters is the ultimate of all magic bands. I was like, okay. Um, there is a couple ARL handbooks that are antenna building guides for the six meter magic band. And uh, I'm just going to start calling stuff what it is. I, yeah. <clears throat> so we're on 40 meters. There's our power level 100%. Mic in's at 100%. We're going to continue on here. Uh, put the amp in standby. Hello, hello, hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. I gotta, I'm not going to lie, this uh, 10,000 watt dummy load that I bought, I'm very impressed with it. It is able to take almost anything I put at it. Uh, earlier this week, I put a 2 meter amplifier into it, and it was so happy, it was like, oh, no big deal. So that leads me to believe that I think the only difference between a line terminus load from Bird for frequency, I mean, I never put mine on a grid dip meter. I guess I should. I could do a whole video on that. It's the data tag says 0 to 30 on it. And then they got another one that's like 30 to whatever, and then whatever, and whatever. I think it's just the same conical resistor that's on the inside. Anywho, um, here's our drive going in. Hello, on our 40 meters. Oh, yeah, got to flip it into operate. Step on the pedal. Hello, hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, hello, 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 hello. Perfect. Getting our nice, smooth, 12, 1300 watts of power with our 80 watts of drive, which is exactly what we're wanting. We're going to see 12 to 1400 watts on almost every band, and that's what we're going to expect out of this guy. Without uh, kicking the drive up a little bit, we're not going to see a whole lot more performance in that. When tubes are, I don't want to say, these tubes are in really great condition. These are very good condition IMAX. Um, pure virginal, virginal, virgin, virgin, virgin tubes. We'll probably get 1500 watts out of it for a short period of time with 80 to 100 watts of drive. But that doesn't last. They'll all settle down and then they'll run like this for like decades if you don't abuse them. Okay, so on our load chart, we're going to do 8 and 3.2. So 8 and 3.2. The reason we're doing a chart like this is that when this goes on to the next owner, instead of him having to hunt and peck for it, which that is the hardest time on the tube that you'll ever do to it, is because the power is trying to come out of the tube and it can't because the circuit that's attached to it isn't resonant, so the RF can't flow that direction, so it backs up into the tube. 
makes the anode incredibly hot heats up all the components inside the, the tube very very hot so to extend the life of the tube you only want to do this once and i strongly suggest that y'all they got tube amplifiers out there and i'm sure y'all do have got a cheat sheet let's say you work a lot of 40 and a lot of 20 well okay so after you've overcome the the monumental task of changing antennas or getting your tuner to load on 20 or however you're going to go about doing it now you got to go and set up your amp it's handy if you like to operate a certain portion of the band have your numbers written down so you can dial your tuners in exactly where they need to be now on the older boxes like the sv220s and stuff they kind of played at this but i mean this is a direct gear drive and you're going to re be able to re-emulate the numbers a lot with very good precision um, the SP220 they tried, they just got a print on there and what I tell people to do is just take a little, put a, put a little piece of post-it note on the back of it and put a little mark on it and write on it, you know, or put a label maker. I, I deplore, I can't stand when I go to look at amps to buy them and they've got scratch marks in the paint where somebody literally took like a flat blade screwdriver and they're eh, 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 eh. No! <laughs> no, these are, uh, these are pretty graduated in their operation. So like, I can screw this all the way up, and now that I know that if I'm working 7.150 uh, megahertz, all I gotta do is dial this to eight, let's say, and we'll screw this all up, and I'll go, oh, I need to go to like 3.2, which is gonna be roughly about there. After moving the knobs around, I might not be dead on on the absolute perfect resonant point because it's impossible to catch that. You, you might have to tweak it just a little bit, but hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, hello. It's going to get you really close to where you need to be, thus protecting your precious tubes. I know I've covered this in many videos, but I just thought I would bring it up in this one as well. Okay, let's see. What's next? 20 meters. And this is what I've always referred to as the magic band. I could be completely wrong. I mean, it's been known to happen. I'm, you know, I'm about as sharp as a bowling ball. But uh, we're gonna go to 20 meters and let's see what happens. Can you even imagine that? They're like 16 years old showing up to pick up your date from prom. She's got her dress on and a strap on on the outside of it. She goes to prom like that as some kind of gag and how you try to play that off as cool to all your friends, how bad that looks all the way around. God, where do I come up with that crazy stuff? That kind of likes both those things. Yeah, that's why I called Squirrely Dan. Yeah, reason fucking five million. Well, not to be impolite, but this gal suggested that maybe I should have some attentions paid to my butt's hole. That ever, ever happened to you guys? You ever have a gal suggest that you need some attentions paid to your butts holes? I take that as a hard no, I guess. Okay, oh, my brain. This is your brain on RF. This is your brain with too much RF. We are on 20 meters. Let's go back up here to the ICOM. Show our frequency one more time. There's our power settings. Hello, hello, one, two, one, two. Oh, got in PTT, hold on. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Good pass through. Let's zoom on down here again. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This test of showing it working on every single band is actually very vital. Uh, I can think of several instances where we've gone and done this simple little demonstration test, um, and it has revealed to us problems that weren't, and they were all in the RF deck, that weren't present on, let's say, like 80 and 40 and 160. Well, we got to 15 meters and that whole band was exploded, or 10. And it made us take our attention and go back into it and then fix it for 10. And then I'd go on and show it running all over again. This is actually a really valuable test. Um, I can't just put the video out and say, here, it works. Then the guy gets it on the other end. Hey, man, I was trying the thing on 15 meters and it just didn't. 
It allows us to go back. Um, I had a gentleman with a Golden Eagle amplifier that I worked on a couple years ago. He sold it. It went back around through town, you know, kind of like a, a used used girlfriend in high school. They kind of made their rounds around town. It came back to him and it was all burnt up. And we were able to go back to the YouTube video of when it was here for repair, pull up the images of the the images of the, the, the amp and what it looked like on the inside and what we did when we repaired it for us to be able to fix it again. Because the parts that were on the inside were exploded. Explode, exploge, exploded. Okay, 20 meters, middle of the man, 180 watts of drive. Hello. Put it into operate, BBI. Hello. Hello. So now we're getting a little more chotch out of it on 20 meters than we were on 80, or on 40 and 80 and so on. Now we're seeing about 1400. Hello. 1380. Hello. It's even showing up on the front of the amp on the gauge in the front. Hello. Running just the way we should though. Hello. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's roll back up here. Now, over in the corner, I've got this bird meter here mounted up here to the right. Hey. 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 Okay. Got this bird meter mounted up here. Now, the element that's in it's 25 megahertz through 60. So I don't pay a lot of attention to that until we get up towards the 10 meter band and so on. But I have noticed that the SWR bridge inside the radio, which is relatively accurate, relatively accurate, and I'm tongue in cheek with a slight smile on my face, uh, and the reflected meter are pretty darn close. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that is where it has sat this entire time. So, we know our input's good. All right. Let's continue on with our little cheat sheet. So 20 is going to be, I'd say about a 4.8. And then over here on the tune, we're going to be about a 1.5. Next stop, you know where. Okay, so here we are on 15 meters. And up we go again. Focus, you son of a gun. Come on. Focus. Hey, Mary, come on. You're only a Sony XX or a FX5. Come on, really? Someday, when it's not Christmas, <laughs> I'll be able to afford that new $1,700 lens that I want to get so desperately bad. Okay, let's put the amp in, in operate or in uh, standby. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whew. Oh my god, all my data would have been invalid. Oh lord! It's not that critical, you guys. It's not. I, I really do. I appreciate the guy's input. I just, I was like, sheesh. But, like I told him, I said, I appreciate you looking out for me. And I do, and I know I'm being really thematic, you know, really um, melodramatic about it and <laughs> not making a big deal of it and I shouldn't be I should have smiled and taken the input and said yeah you're right okay and that's kind of what I did when he when he sent me a text it was just out of the blue it was like hey you should do this and this and this and this not hi hey are you open for some ideas on how you should I'm just I'm sorry you get a thick skin in this business because it's always the builder's fault it's never the environment or the shipper or the actual operator of the equipment it's always the builder's fault so you get really your go-to emotion sometimes is defense. So, my bad. I apologize. So anyhow, we're right in the middle of the band. Do 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 do. So we can talk through it, no problem. Now let's go over here again. Let's take a look at what we got going on for drive power. Do one two one two one two. Same thing we've seen this entire time. About 80 watts. Put the amp into operate. Step on the foot pedal. Do do. Fart knuckers. Hello. Baby Jesus tears. Hello. It's working. Let's go on back down here again. Hello, hello, hello. That meter's working. Hello. Audio. Okay. Everything's working. So, we'll continue on in our little cheat sheet. 
for the new future owner of this thing. This is a, what should we call that? From your angle, it looks kind of like a five point, what, four? From my angle, it looks like a 5.3. And then we're gonna call that a 1. oh, 1.5 again. Give you a little secret. Look at how little the capacitors are interlaced on that thing. <laughs> Can't get much, much lower than 1.5 actually. It's, yeah. Okay. Now this amplifier does have the 10 meter board added to it, which was, uh, they made these with the actual relay and the tuning chokes in play. And then they were told, no, they weren't. And then you had to buy the amplifier, prove that you had a Mars license at some point or another. They'd send you the board and then this is a the, the slide in piece here. Right, right here. This bit here. That's actually a whole nother phenolic board as you can see and it's very clearly writ, writ on the board. Um, this is a 10 meter mod. Okay, so this is an aftermarket but factory modification to this this device so all right let me get this set up i can just wait to get the text i'm going to get a text here i just know it because at some point or another i probably wasn't paying close enough attention and i forgot if i was an upper or lower sideband and whatever is uh, gentlemanly agreed should be the appropriate mode of operation for that particular band at that particular frequency <laughs> i got them on a sealed system and I'm not trying to do this on the air. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so run 10 meters. Let's go look at the radio here again. Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. Balance to the universe has been restored. Life goes on. So, once again, stand by. Hello, one, two, one, two. Let's go on down here. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Same on drive. Let's put this in operate. Hello. Hello. One, two, hello. Hello. Audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Everything's happy. Everything's peaceful. Hello, one, two, 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 one, two. Everybody's happy. Some of this stuff I have to do um, to validate what I'm showing you, like um, the pass-through tune. I really only should show that to you once, like, oh, we're here, we're gonna do it at the beginning of the thing when we start out on 160 or 10 or however I end up doing it. I just do it over and over and over again to help you as the viewer be able to follow along what's going on, okay? Like the drive level, I shouldn't have to show this every time and I really shouldn't even have to show the radio. I should be able to just show the amplifier and saying I'm putting the signal into the amplifier and it'd be accepted this is what we're doing. But it's okay, we can keep going through these verifications on every single video if you all feel it's necessary. I'm willing to do that, it's not a big problem. So continuing on guys, before we can wrap this up here in just a second, we're gonna fill out our load and tune chart so 10 meters, I would say that is a 4.5. And then once again, about a 1.1. On 10 meters, it was very finicky between 1.1 and 1.5 was a difference of about 200 watts of output. So it's gonna be a little bit picky for you on 10 meters, but it is what it is. Here's our chart. Let me hold this just for a second, just in case this paper ever gets lost, the origin, the next owner can come back and refer to the video as a reference. All right, let me shut all this crazy mess down. Give me a few minutes to reset. We'll be back and we'll wrap this. So we're just, I'm over here playing, okay? Guys, don't get mad at me. I'm just, I'm playing. Hello, 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 hello. Ah, darn giant camera. Hold on. Let's go down here to 1x here real quick. Okay. 
about 150 watts worth of drive. We're going to accept the fact that about 220 is about the most that we ever want to do here. Oh. Turn my radio off over there. Put this into operate. Eighteen hundred ish with a hundred and fifty ish watts of drive. Had to be done. Had to be done. Just had to be done. You guys know where I'm at. You know what I'm doing. You know what's going on. So it's uh I wouldn't put any more than about 220 watts of drive in this thing ever, peak, total. That'll get you north of 2,000 watts, about 21, 2200 watts. And it'll do it pretty reliably. Now, now that I got that out of my system, let's start thinking about putting this back together. But as I go through that, let's talk about the downsides to this little guy. And there are, uh, couple little short ones. This thing was designed to have <clears throat> their 10 tech little 100 watt radio put into it and it was designed to cruise about 1200 watts all day long every day 24 7 and it'll easily do that. Knowing that, embracing that, still waiting for the high voltage to bleed down, knowing that and we're going to embrace that we have to also understand that the airflow through this cabinet isn't the greatest in the world. Now, they used to do this thing, supposedly, I was told, where you would go to the, you go to the factory to pick up your amplifier and they would literally wrap the thing in the towel, they'd roll it up to half legal limit or whatever, wrap it in a towel, give you a tour of the factory and come back and your amp would still be keyed inside of a towel, cooking, they'd be like, well, here's your amplifier. And the point was that the thing was designed to run fairly warm, and it was solid, okay? Um, the fan that's in here, I have never been happy with the fans that are in this. Just pointing that out. Now, knowing that, and realizing the fact that this is now like almost 2020, okay? We're in the year 2019, and this thing was made in the 1990s, 30 years later, and the internal structure of this thing is in still tip-top shape. Either by some magical means, this thing never, ever, ever got used, or it got ran a lot, and their design theory was great. So they've got a little fan that pulls fresh air in from this side, blows it across, enveloping around the body of the tube around the anode, and then it exhausts out the top and the side. Uh, me personally, if I had this box, on the tin, the lid. So this is your input side, okay. These are your exhaust ports, this side. I get myself a little 120 millimeter muffin fan and set it here on the lid pushing air down in also um, to help cool this just a little bit more. The upside to that is this amplifier is literally silent. I mean, it's like the hunt for the Red October and, you know, engage the silent drive amplifier because there's no fan noise associated with it. There's no discolorization, no heat distortion, no nothing. And it's got tip top full output iMac 3500Zs in it. So when you guys receive this, it's going to come in three pieces amplifier one, transformer number. Well, actually, no. It's going to come in two pieces. You're going to get your tubes separately from the amp. But the amp's going to come in one piece. I've shipped a couple of these all over the country. Um, and with them being crated and the new system that we have for transporting these, we've had zero um, issues. The company I was using, we stumbled a couple times right out the box, but we've got all the little bugs worked out of it now, and they're putting two by four corners and you know, first they're packaging this in ex expanded bladder. So they'll take the box, they'll put it in a cardboard box, they'll put down an expansion bladder pack underneath it. 
set the amp in it and it'll encapsulate the bottom side of the amp. And then they put a new expansion pack on the top and they seal the box so it's completely encapsulated. Then that cardboard box is then in turn put inside of what we create. It's about $20 more to do it this way, but it's inside of a wood crate, inside of a box, inside of expansion bladder foam packs. I, I, I can't stomach when one of these things gets broken because one, the parts are impossible to find, two, the customer's disappointed, and three, and this is a way down, this would be like a four or five, I've got to work on it again. So we've come up with a new way of getting things moved around. This is your jumper set for your 110-220 back here in the corner. And like I said, it does come with a full manual, the original full manual, not something I went and I got off the internet and printed, the actual manual that came with the amplifier. I have the original manual in a separate binder will come with this. Um, we're pretty stuck at about $1,500 is what we're asking for this box. And I feel that that's a fair ask. Um, there's, you know, this one connector, but in the same breath, this coax upgrade in here, going to this 316, it's made of Teflon. It's way better than the stock foam inserted, foam injected coax that was in here. So that's an upgrade in my opinion. And the upgrade was done right. I mean, he routed it right, he redid all the zip ties appropriately. I feel very confident in this thing. We didn't have to replace any of the lamps and there's no facial defects to this whatsoever. There's no cracks in the glass, there's no nothing. The lid is in immaculate condition, and short of those three little scratches that are on the bottom, this thing is in a 9.8 condition out of 10. So $1,500 plus the ride. The first one that wants to call me and get this, you are now the proud owner of a 10 Tech Centurion 2 tube 3500Z full legal limit, get down with it amplifier. Let me get this thing situated to get off the bench and we'll be back. Well, here we go again, going down that lonely road. We're done. Uh, this is it. This is a beautiful thing. I've always loved 10 Tech equipment. I don't know what is going on with 10 Tech currently. It's, it's that, it's just sad. That's all I'm gonna say. And I don't, I don't know what else that, I wish them the best and I hope that they, yeah, anyhow. I should stop before I get myself in trouble. <sighs> I keep thinking about the guy that was so insistent that I didn't know the difference between UHF and VHF and HF. And I think maybe in that last video, I might, or the, the video preceding this one, I might have said something about how I have a two meter amplifier coming up for sale. And I might have got UHF and VHF mixed around as I was just flippantly making a comment. Maybe that's what he was going off about. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, this is your 160 through 10 meter, 10 tech Centurion. Guys, just give me a ring. Give me a shout. I really want this thing to go away. Of course, we probably won't ship it till right after the first of the year, which is just only 10, 15 days away at this point. But uh, big shout out all of you guys for the constant support. I know I put out a lot of these videos and I've been kind of crabby in the last couple of them. And it's just, there's so much drama going on all the time. It's like, I just want to work on my amps. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm trying, I'm doing the best that I can, but you guys also have to recognize that it takes a long time to keep putting out these videos. It's like, I'm done shooting this now. It's three o'clock or six o'clock in the evening. Now I'll go spend the next three hours behind a computer making it. So it all looks nice and smooth for you guys, for you all to enjoy it. And then on top of that, then I got to wait and upload it on the internet. So it probably won't come out until about midnight or one o'clock tonight. But the thing is, is this takes a lot. And I appreciate everybody's patience and the never ending desire to seem to get stuff here for me to work on. I love it. It's hard for me to continually keep turning down to work, but I'm not currently taking on any projects right now at this time whatsoever. No new repairs, no new new builds, nothing. I have no more physical space. And it seems like no matter how hard I try, um, the more stuff goes out of here, it doesn't seem like the pile's getting any smaller. So I'm trying and I appreciate your guys' patience. So once again, thanks to all you guys. 
big shout out. Hopefully somebody out there is going to want to have this. They'll be 10-8 and straight come the first of the year to be a great Christmas present for them. Give me a call on that number or shoot me a text. Now I have an SP220 that might be coming up for sale. And I'm going to take a look at it probably tonight or tomorrow. And I'm going to do a quick little video on that. And hopefully it's something that we can just easily get running. And you guys will be interested in getting it. I have one guy that's very interested in getting it. But I put it out for everybody to be able to have the opportunity to jump on it at the same time. So there we go. It's going to be a 3500Z kind of end of year. But like I said, I've got to get started on the end of year video. Which is going to be pretty freaking cool. <laughs> you guys know me. I never cease to entertain. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out. www.bbiams.com. Come follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Questions or anything I can do to help you, don't hesitate to call me at this number. I'll do what I can. I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.